Hi there, crafty friends. This is Jen from Katahdin Crafts, and I'm excited to be back for my second week as April's guest designer for Newton's Nook Designs. This week, I made two shaker cards using Newton's Thanksgiving and Newton's Kitchen. I decided to make two cards this week. Um, I wasn't sure what I really thought of the larger frame in the tan background color once I got the first card done, so I really wanted to see what it would look like with smaller and with a crisp white background. So both cards were actually constructed the same exact way, all the way down to the Copic coloring. The first thing that I did for both cards was to stamp my images onto Copic friendly cardstock. I'm not going to show all the coloring in this video because it's all the same basic formula. I used the same colors for each kitty's fur, Y35 for the base color, with Y38 and Y15 for shadowing, and y YR16 for the striped areas. As you can see, I just go ahead and I flick in the sides of his cheeks and I just keep going back and forth with the three colors, making the sides a little bit darker. And then the thing I like to do when I do my Newton kitties is I like to leave the center of his face a little bit lighter. So I just use a light touch with the Copic marker and I make sure that I don't go over it a second time because every time that you go over with even your base color, it makes your, your coloring area a little bit darker. So if you just avoid that center, you can have a little bit more contrast. I try to get the transitions between each color as smoothly blended as I can, so I just keep working it out. And then I go in and I add those, I added those um, striped areas with the YR16 and just little triangles. And then for all the dishes, I use B21. And then I used um, B23 for the mid range color and then B24 for the, the darker and then for the little as you can see I'm trying to get it a little bit lighter in the middle and darker on the edges and that way it makes it look like it's a little bit more three-dimensional and then I wanted it to look like that speckled dish sets that you see so I speckled it with B26 and then the, the back a little bit lighter with B24 as you can see I got a little bit out of the line so I always use the colorless blender in order to try to get a little bit of that ink lifted off. And then I wanted this to look like an apple pie kind of filling in the bowl and then the apple pie made. So I used E50 and then E34 for like the little specks to kind of mimic a, an apple. And then for the wooden spoon handle I used E34 and E37. And then for the little scarf or bandana, I'm not really sure which way you would call it, but I used B000 BG01 and BG02 and then to finish up the kitties I used R20 for his ears and then for the shadowing of the chef's hats I used C00 and C01 I just wanted to have a little bit of contrast there and for the pie crust I used this for both pie crust in the card and it's for or I used E51 for the base color and then E53 and E55 and then I did the same exact color scheme as I did for the bowl, for the dish, and for the pie plate. And then for that little whipped cream, I did the same thing like the chef's hat. So I wanted to give it a little bit of um, shadowing, so I used the C00 and the C01. And now I wanted it to look as if those chef hats were sitting directly on his head, so I just took off that little bit of white border at the bottom so they would fit perfectly. And then I used an E50 Copic marker and I um, colored the whole entire frame, just a quick little color. Um, and speaking of the frame, in the second card I will show you how I made both of those frames. And here I'm using some Alt New inks, Caribbean Sky and Persian Blue, and I'm just randomly stamping the pie along the frame in the different colors. And now I wanted that same background color to be, or the same color from the frame to be on the background, so I used the E50. I, I used the top frame, as you can see, to kind of just give me a guideline of where I needed to put those boxes, so I didn't need to do that whole back plate. So I just quickly fit, filled that in. And here I'm trying to get it so the static is on the acetate as much. Um, yeah, I don't know if the powder really worked on that or not, but I'm, now I'm using just a little bit of liquid glue and putting it on there. I tend to, I have two cats so they like to come visit me so I tend to have a lot of hair in my you know cat hair in my area so I was trying to see if I could get some of that to lift off. The acetate definitely is a static magnet. Um, 
yeah, so, but it, it worked a little bit, the powder. I found that the brush actually scratched the acetate, so that didn't work. So then I used a little powder bag. Um, now I'm using some foam adhesive, and I doubled it so I could get the dimension. I needed that for um, the little shaker bits that we're going to put in. And then once I doubled it, I also cut it in half so I could get more use out of it. As you can see, I made three separate chambers. And you just have to make sure that there's no spaces at all so that your little jewels will not escape. I just added a mixture of different sequins, microbeads, um, colored dewdrops, all in coordinating colors. And just put them in each of the chamber. I kind of try to even them out. And now I'm just going to add the frame top to the base and just get that even on there. And I had a couple of the little sequences, you know, pop out onto the foam, stick to the foam. So I just had to pop those back in. And now I'm going to assemble my pieces and adhere them to my card. And I, I put them in order for a little story. And then next up, I'm going to cut a, a piece of Arctic cardstock, eight and three quarters by seven. And I'm going to score it at the three and a half inch mark. And it was just a little bit too wide for my card, actually. So I just took a little sliver off with the, the trimmer. And then I stamped, there's always room for pie, Versamark ink, and I heat embossed it with white embossing powder. And then I added, to finish my story, I wanted to show um, Newton all full of pie on the inside and then the finished pie. And then I'm taking the frame of the card and adding it to my card base. And voila, I have a finished product. And like I said, I wasn't sure what I thought about the tan. Um, so up next, I'm going to show you what it looked like with a little bit of a smaller frame and white. My husband actually preferred the tan color over the white, but I like the white over the tan. So everybody can be the judge of what they think. And now we have, okay, like I said, I was going to go back and show you how to make the frame. I took a stitched die cut on the outside. And then I put the frame, the windows framed in the inside, and I just centered it. And then used the um, purple tape to hold down the dies and then run it through the machine. And then here I'm using Arctic ink by Alta New and stamping the random pies on again, just like I did the first time. And I'm making the chambers the same way. And I had missed this step on my first card. I forgot to run the little brush around the foam at the, the bottom of the foam tape so the little pieces and um, gems and stuff would not stick to that and I did miss that so I, I remember to do it on the second time and I just adhered it all back together another one and you can see the different sizes of the bigger one versus the small one right here it would have been better if it was a little bit further down frame, sorry. But there, so now on this, you can see that card base. I You can see the edging, and it frames it a little bit nicer, I think. And I like the stark contrast of the white versus the blue. Please comment below and let me know which card that you preferred, my husband's favorite tan or my favorite with the white. Thank you so much for stopping in today. Please like below, and if you haven't subscribed to Newton's Nook Designs, channel, make sure you do so for plenty of inspiration. Also make sure to check out their blog at newtonsnookblog.com and please find me at katahdencrafts.com and on Instagram at katahdencrafts. Thank you very much. Stay safe everybody.